right, so we're here backstage right Best Denver with the man, the myth, the legend. Andrew WK, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing very well. How are you? Thank very you. good, very good, very, very good. Very kind, generous intro there. Yeah, well, I mean, you're kind of this, you've become this mythic person over the years. Um, this, Everyone looks up to you. I don't know anybody that doesn't, really. I don't know what I'm trying well, to say. Well, there's plenty out there, well, but I'm yeah. glad you haven't met them. That's very, very kind of you to say. And But you have a world-famous Twitter feed. Your Facebook feed is awesome. Thank you. Um, you've become this kind of icon of positivity and partiness. Thank you for seeing it that way. I, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> How do you see it? Uh, as a, a, a person trying to have some fun and trying to understand life and uh, trying to do what he feels he should do. Yeah. So that is positive in its own way, I suppose. And so how did you uh, figure out what you should do? Uh, that's uh, been, it's, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, right? yeah that's the thing. I, it probably takes a lifetime or many lifetimes. Uh, try to listen to that instinct. Try to listen to that sometimes irrational voice deep inside, deeper than the initial voices that you might or that I might normally have listened to and go with it. Sometimes I went against my gut with that. Sometimes I went uh, against other people's advice, but there just became this strong sense that sometimes what I was supposed to do, it might not even be what I wanted to do yeah. or, or it might not even be what I thought I liked doing, but it was a deeper sense that I was meant to do that. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, doing what we're doing right now plays into it. That's for sure. I like that you mentioned instincts. I, I found in my own life, if I go against my instincts, it's like, remember those old racing uh, video games where if you started, tried to go the wrong way on the track, yes. they put up all the roadblocks and make you go the right way? Yes. I feel like if you go against your instincts, um, it, it becomes some, one of those kind of scenarios. That's true. It can be like fighting against uh, an impossible resistance. At times, I find that contradicting your own instincts can open up deeper uh, and unexpected paths. Um, it's it's all very mysterious. The minute you feel like you're starting to get it figured out, for me at least, you realize that you can't figure it out. It, 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 it kind of goes beyond the ability to figure out. It, it's very mystical in that way. You can only experience it. You kind of look back and you think, well, something must have worked out right because this happened and that happened and this happened and I got here. But I didn't do any of it. I mean, I mean, yeah. I didn't make it happen. You, you, it's easy. It's nice to want to take credit for the good things that have happened in your life and to think that you had some plan. But it, it's really much more unpredictable and uh, mysterious. Yeah, I like to ask people a lot about uh, participation, um, being active at things, and I've found with my own experiences, just getting up off the couch and making things happen. You know, the hardest part. That was the hardest step. Yes. Um, and then once I got out there and started doing things, I mean, here I am talking to you. Who would have thought? That's I true. Just That's that first inertia. Step. Yeah. Momentum de begins to develop. And it's true that oftentimes the most challenging part of doing anything is just beginning to do it. Yeah. Uh, because it can seem overwhelming. If I even thought about this, the show today at this great festival, if I thought about everything that had to happen and all the pieces that had to come together to make the show happen, it would have been overwhelming. I mean, right. it really is overwhelming. Yeah. It's almost, it, it's actually truly a miracle that this happens. It takes so many individual parts and people's efforts to, to allow this to unfold in the way it does. But if I just think about, okay, I'm gonna rise up off the floor in the hotel room. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, put my foot into a shoe. I'm gonna take a deep breath, because it's high altitude. Take another deep breath, put my other foot into a shoe. That, you know, that's a big step. Yeah. Then I realize I didn't put my pants on, so I have to take the shoes off, put the pants on. But see, I'm making progress, and the next thing you know, I'm on stage. The next thing you know, then we're talking and we're having a great time. So I'd say just, just sometimes breaking it down into those small steps is all that it takes. Yeah. And, and what, one thing, another thing I really, really admire about you is you're someone who does a lot of different things. You don't uh, keep yourself to one whole. How did you figure out you could do so many things with your life? Uh, you know? Well, mo ma mostly by people asking, oh, okay. asking me to do it. So I didn't really know if I could do it. In fact, many times I still think I necessarily can't <laughs> technically do it. I somehow managed to get something of it done. Like I'm not the best writer, but I've been asked to write an advice column. I'm not really like a professional radio host, but I've been doing a radio show. You figure it out as you do it. I'm a big believer that you can start doing something without any idea of how to do it. And, and, and golly, you're gonna be forced to figure it out by doing it. You know what I mean? The pressure will be on. So I don't say, you know, prepare is nice, but you, sometimes you just jump in yeah. and you figure it out as you go. Uh, the one thing that I do is just be Andrew WK and everything that comes along with that is just what it is. You know what I mean? And you don't have to limit yourself beyond just trying to be yourself. Nice. 
And how did you become comfortable with yourself enough to be able to do that? I never really did. Just sort of yeah. stopped caring about yeah. being comfortable. You know, very uncomfortable most of the time, actually. But comfortable with being uncomfortable to a degree. So at home, within the feeling of feeling very displaced. Uh, you know, finding calm in the midst of chaos and sort of accepting that maybe life isn't supposed to be comfortable. Maybe life is supposed to be very intense and puzzling and trying to find something to appreciate within that confusion. You seem like a very strong, confident person. I don't get any of that from you at all. Well, then I'm doing a very good job portraying that. Yeah, you know, right. If I can convince you, then I can convince myself, and that's sometimes enough to get through the day. Yeah. You know, There's still fears and doubts, but you do stuff anyway. You know. So if somebody's sitting at home and they're afraid to actually get up off the couch and make something, do you have any advice to them on how to, how to just get that front foot forward and start making things happen for them? Well, first I would say that if you like being on the couch, that, that, that's fine. I mean, there's going to be so much pressure, and I don't mean to take away from what you're saying here at all. Okay. Uh, uh, I found that sometimes I felt overwhelmed by all the expectations and pressure that was put on me, especially when I was younger, to do this, that, or the other. You know, Now, a lot of it was to go to college or to become a doctor or, you know, or to, to get my act together, whatever it might have been. Societal pressures, teacher pressures, parent, family pressures, friend pressures. Uh, a lot of people thought I shouldn't be doing what I was doing, you know. Uh, so finding a way to follow sort of your own inner momentum. Like when you have to go to the bathroom. Now with some people it's true, they will pee in a cup because they don't want to rise up off the couch. <laughs> now have I done that? We'll just let that rest aside. But <laughs> I'm saying that uh, if you can find something that's as naturally motivating, like having to eat, having to breathe, having to drink water, having to use the restroom, and actually make your life about those things like being a professional bathroom goer a professional eater <laughs> things like that to me i'm a professional partier this was the stuff that was very didn't take a lot of motivation for me to do so to believe that you can actually do the things that are that uh instantaneous that's what was the ch biggest challenge for me i never thought it would be possible to make a living or be have a career or have a life doing what i'm doing now the hardest challenge wasn't actually doing it was believing that you that it you could get away with it basically <laughs> that it could count yeah. Do you find it's easy to do all these things that you want to do? Well, I, like I said, I think it's easy to go to the bathroom. You know, it depends yeah. how constipated, of course. Everyone right. has their I own mean, bathroom I, situation. But I eat a lot of almonds. It kind of helps flow. Okay, yeah, fiber. Out, you know, fiber. Look, but, you know, let's say if you've been drinking lots of water or fluids or milk or whatever all day, and you have to pee, the hard part isn't going pee. The hard part might be finding a toilet or something, but then yeah. going pee is very easy. So try, you know, someone who likes to doodle, someone gets always be drawing and they don't even realize they're drawing it's so next second nature to them they're whatever they're doing they're doodling but they might never believe that they actually do that as their calling but maybe those things that are most second nature most ingrained most most close to you are the ones that you're you know destined to actually uh follow as a career or as a path in life yeah. have you drank a lot of water and peed a lot today yeah, but not as much as you think because it's but very dry it's out very here. Dry. So my body's reabsorbing the urine and using it as a natural internal lubricant. Yeah. Thank goodness. I was pretty surprised how few times I went to the bathroom today. Yes, I don't know. That's it's probably not a good sign yeah, that you know they're supposed to be peeing. Yeah. I guess a gallon a day or whatever, four gallons a day, depending on bladder size. Yeah. Well. Or milk content. We're learning a lot. Yeah. Today. Hey, there's always something to learn when it comes oh. to bathroom stuff. And you like learning, don't you? Yes, very much so. What's your uh, what is, what is something you've always wanted to learn or do that you're afraid of that you haven't done yet? Um, well, I would like to learn more about math and things like yeah, that. Um, Cause I, I never got too good at it in school. And sometimes you feel this, you can feel this resentment to never yeah. want to do good, or you can feel this sort of longing to finally understand it. Uh, yeah. And I tried. I, to I have a learning some, disability. Math doesn't come okay, easy well, to then, me. Okay. Well, then, yeah, so. probably I probably in a similar situation. It was uh, one of those things that I, I I developed a resentment, but I wanted to sort of beat it once and for all to understand basic algebra, to understand calculus, to understand trigonometry. Even if I couldn't do it, just to understand what the concept is. So that's something. Awesome. Well, Andrew, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it, oh, buddy. Well, thanks for hanging out and chatting with me today. Thank you very much. This I was uh, this was a lot of fun. I learned a few things. Thank you. Um, I did not I, expect I did to talk too. about pee, but likewise, I that mean, was that's cool. Sorry about that, but uh, yeah. you took it in stride, so yeah. thank you. I mean, you have great uh, great chops. You and I have great bladder control, so I've been holding it this whole time. Yeah, me too, actually. Okay, let's good. go find a bathroom. All right. See you, I know. Thank you. Yeah, take care.